and this is the Fitcam X Setur Wi-Fi Enable Mirror Dash Cam. That's right, I said Wi-Fi Enable. The Setur was the first mirror dash cam that had Wi-Fi to hit the market. In fact, that option is still very rare today. There are only a few mirror dash cams that offer Wi-Fi. And if you want to see how the Wi-Fi works and the app functionality, make sure you check out my full review video for the Setur. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. On this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the full menu and my personally recommended settings for this dash cam. And before I get started, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link to this dash cam in the description down below in case you want to get one for yourself. And I'll start by showing you something I did not mention on the original review video, and that is that the Setur mirror dash cam comes already with a glare reducer. And you can see some of the wear on this dash cam from me using the dash cam. That is on the glare reducer itself, which I can remove if I wanted to have this without glare reducer. Now, what is the difference? Here is the Bantop H612T a screen that does not have a glare reducer on there, and you can see how much reflection there is on there versus the glare reducer. Now the glare reducer does not completely eliminate all reflections but it does definitely reduce those and it makes it a little bit easier to see during the day. And we'll begin by how to play back the videos that we have previously recorded and that is done by swiping right. Now this is going to bring up the video player and what you'll find is that they have sorted out the videos into different folders. The very first folder is for the front video and these are videos that were due to a car crash. Obviously because I have not crashed there are no videos in my front camera. The next folder is going to be the front camera but this is ordinary video. This is video just of me driving around. And the next two folders are the same thing but for the rear camera. Rear camera with an accident or rear camera of just driving around. Now if you wanted to see any of these videos we can play them by clicking on them and the video is going to automatically start playing and we can also pause them. We can also choose to delete a video by clicking on this check mark, selecting the video we don't want, and hitting delete. But let's continue going down the list. The last two folders are for any from photos that we have taken or any photos from the rear camera that we have taken. I don't really take pictures with this dash cam so there are no photos inside of there. And we can return back to the main menu by pressing on that arrow. But now let's move over to the settings and that is done with the little gear icon right here. Now once I'm in the settings, the very first option is going to be loop recording. All that Dashcam's recording loop recording, which means that they record video continuously, but they segment that video into smaller manageable chunks. Now here you can have it at one, three or five. There is no incorrect setting. It's just a matter of preference. I prefer three minutes. I think that gives me a nice file size where I don't end up with too many files. The next option is going to be the time lapse function. Now this function is going to be used if you have the hardwired kit and want to record a time lapse. You can have it record or one picture every second, one picture every two seconds, or one picture every three seconds, which means that if you wanted to have a fluid time lapse, you can select one picture every second. But if you were trying to maximize and capture as much time as possible into a time lapse, you would select one picture every three seconds. I don't use this function, so I'm going to turn this off. The next option is record audio. This dash cam records audio or video, and here we can turn off the audio portion of it. I like to always record the audio. I think that's important, so I'm going to turn that on. Next Next option is the G sensor. This dash cam can detect when you get into a car crash and when you get into a car crash it's going to flag the video of the car crash and put it into that folder that I showed you earlier where it said urgent video. Now here we can tell the dash cam how sensitive to be to detecting a car crash. We can have it in low medium or high. Now I found that if I set this too high, every time I close the door on my car or if I move it a little, the dash cam thinks I got into a car crash. So I recommend experimenting with the setting. So far for my vehicle, low has worked out the best. And the next option is parking guard or what people call park mode. If for some reason somebody were to hit our car when it is parked, the dash cam can potentially record the person or vehicle if we turn this function on. And here again we have the same setting of how sensitive we want that dash cam to be to detecting a car crash. Now here I do like to set this at high because I want to capture even if somebody leans on my car. However, you do again want to experiment with the setting because you potentially could just be recording false alerts. So make sure you select the one that makes sense for you. The next option is going to be the license plate. We can choose to have a license plate displayed on the video 
that we're currently recording and that is going to show on the actual video file and you can put in here a license plate or you can just put in a phone name. The next option is the screensaver function and this turns off the actual LCD screen after a period of time. Perhaps I want the screen to turn off after three minutes. The screen is going to completely revert back to a normal mirror while it's still recording. This is what I call still recording. I can also set that at one minute. However, I like to use this as a digital mirror all the time, so I turn this function off. Next, we have video encoding, and here we get two choices, H.264 or H.265. Now, if you intend to extract the videos from this dash cam and play them back on a computer, and the computer is a little bit old, you're probably going to have better luck with H.264 because that is compatible with older computers and all their phones. However, if you have a newer computer, you are probably going to be able to play H.265, and if you have a newer phone, it is definitely going to be able to play H.265. Now, H.264 and H.265 produce about the same same level of quality, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick, I'm going to get good video. However, H.265 does produce a little bit of a smaller file size versus H.264, so you could potentially record more in your memory card by selecting H.265. Next we have frequency, and here we got two choices, 60 hertz or 50 hertz. If we are in Europe, we want to select 50 hertz, and if we're in the United States, we want to select 60 hertz. And what this does, this is going to reduce any kind of flickering of any lights that we might potentially record. I'm going to leave mine on 60 hertz. And the next option is going to be USB mode. And what that is, is that there are three ways to get the video out of this dash cam. One way will be for me to remove the memory card and take it to my computer. The second way will be to connect with the app and download those videos wirelessly. Or the third way is by selecting USB mode, and then I can take the entire dash cam off the vehicle and connect it to the computer using the USB cable, and then I can download the videos using the USB mode. Next up, we have the key voice. And what this does, this turns on a beeping sound. And you can see that that beeping sound can kind of get annoying over time, so I like to turn that key voice off. And the next option is the volume of the dash cam. Now this controls the volume of the beeping that you hear and of the startup sound, but also the volume of the videos that are being played back through the dash cam. I like to hear those videos clearly, so I select high. And the next option is the boot sound, and let me show you what that sounds like. And that is the boot sound. Now the boot sound is going to happen when the dash cam turns on and it's also going to happen when the dash cam turns off. Now you may enjoy that sound, but I like to turn that sound completely off. And the next one is the stream media option. And I'll go back to the front. Right now we can see that we're looking at the front camera and the rear camera. And we know we can change views by swiping on the screen. And whatever view I leave it on, that's the view that is going to be shown to me every time the dash cam turns on. However, if I want to force the dash cam into always showing me the rear view, I'm going to turn this on. Whenever the dash cam turns on again, it is always going to default to the rear view, which is this one right here. Now, because I like to use my dash cam as an LCD mirror, just like I would with a regular mirror, I do leave that function on all the time. So even if I change views, the dash cam returns to the rear camera every time I turn on my vehicle. Next, we have languages. And here we can select from several languages that are built in. I'm gonna leave mine in English. The next option is date and time. And this dash cam is gonna automatically pull this information from the GPS. However, here's where you can select the time format where you want this to select, be shown in military time or in AM PM time. Next, we have the format option. And this allows us to format the memory card, deleting all the videos at once. It is also recommended to use the format function whenever we are installing a brand new memory card on here. Moving over to the last row, we have the ability to return this dash cam to its factory defaults. If for some reason, 
and we change something on it and we don't know how to return it back to normal, by returning it back to factory, this dash cam is gonna behave just like when you got it out of the box for the very first time. The next option is the Wi-Fi app QR code. This is convenient if we're trying to download the app, we can pull the app using this QR code and we can also see the Wi-Fi and password information. Next, we have the version. Now there's nothing to change on here. This just shows us the current software or firmware that this dash cam is currently running. Same thing with GPS. There's nothing to change on there. It just shows us if the GPS antenna is working. Next up is the time zone. And if the GPS is working, here we can set the time zone for where we are located. If we do not set the time zone correctly, this dash cam is gonna pull the incorrect time and incorrect date. So it is important to set the correct time zone whenever we are using the GPS. Then we have speed calibration. If for some reason the speedometer on our vehicle does not match the GPS speed shown on this dash cam, we can correct for that on here, either subtracting or adding speed as required. Now I found that the GPS is very accurate on this dash cam, so it seems to match the speedometer of my vehicle, so there's no need for me to make any adjustments there. Next up is the speed setting option. And what this is, this is a speeding reminder or a speeding warning. And here you can set at what speed you want the dash cam to beep and let you know that you are potentially speeding. And finally, we have the speed unit where we can change between kilometers per hour or miles per hour. And now that you know how to use this dash cam to its full potential, make sure you hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And remember, I put a link to this dash cam in the description down below in case you wanna get one. If you guys have any other questions regarding the Fitcam X Setour Wi-Fi dash cam, please put that in the comments down below and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.